So we're going to continue looking at some more difficult examples from L'Hopital's rule. And these examples are still the indeterminate types that we saw in the first part of this video, or the first part of class. And the difference is, if it's not directly in the form of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then you're going to have to make it look like that. So when you have these other indeterminate forms, you have to struggle and turn it into something that looks like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity before you can apply L'Hopital's rule. That doesn't mean it's impossible, it just means it's a little extra work. So we'll start out with this one. Now let's just do kind of a thought experiment. If you try and put in the limit as x goes to infinity inside here, where's the inside of this going to go? Well, the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 is just going to be 1. What happens to the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 divided by x? What's going to happen to that limit? Where's it going? Well, 2 divided by 100, or 2 divided by 1,000, 2 divided by a million, a billion, a trillion, 2 divided by a Google. It's going to get really, really small. Where is it going to go? It's going towards 0. So you'd have 1 plus 0, which is 1. We have 1 to x, which is going to infinity. So it's kind of this weird balance. Like, well, where does this, you know, trade off? Where does it equal out? Does it have a limit? This is one of those 1 to the infinity power kind of cases. And although we want to apply L'Hopital's rule, we can't do it just yet. So what are we going to do? We're going to play the same game we did last time. Kind of a hint at that is that you've got this exponent here, which is a function of x. So it's not just a constant, it's a function of x. So like we did with the last one, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to get the ln of y equals the ln of this limit. Now I'm going to interchange the ln and the limit in terms of their order. So I'll just jump straight ahead to limit as x approaches infinity of the ln of 1 plus 2 over x to the x power. And that looks good. What did we do last time when we did something like this? What was our next step? Yeah, bring the x down. Using the rules for logarithms, we've got a power rule. That x comes out in front. And I get x times the ln of 1 plus 2 over x. Is this in the form of L'Hopital's rule? Well, I guess another thought experiment. You've got limit as x approaches infinity of x. That's infinity. But what's going to happen to this logarithmic term here? It's going to be in the log of what? Well, 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. Log of, log of 1 is 0. So it's not quite in the right form yet. Now we've got infinity times 0. And again, it's like, well, which question, which one of these wins out? Infinity is pretty big. Zero is pretty unforgiving. What wins? It's not in the form for L'Hopital's rule yet, which is why I chose this example, because there's a little trick that you're probably not going to recognize for yourself. So maybe put a star in your notes here for this little trick. I'm going to write this as the ln of 1 plus 2 over x divided by 1 over x. So instead of multiplying, I'm going to divide by the reciprocal. And let's look at it from the perspective of this one. When you divide by a fraction, the rule is to invert and multiply, right? So you'd be multiplying by the reciprocal of 1 over x, which is just x. And so you'd get here. So these two things are equivalent, but in rewriting it, let's see what's happened. Now, as x approaches infinity, let's look at the denominator. As x approaches infinity, what happens to 1 over x? Where's that going to go? Zero. And in the numerator, 
As x approaches infinity, you get the log of 1, which is 0. So finally, now we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this quotient. The thing that you got to do for yourself is remember that you're going to you're not applying the quotient rule here. You're going to find the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. So, all right, there's a lot of work in that. L on a y is the limit as x approaches infinity. Let's start with the denominator. For the denominator, you might want to remind yourself that this is equal to x to the negative first power. That might make it a little bit more user-friendly to differentiate. What's the derivative of the denominator going to be? Negative x to the negative 2. Thanks, Taylor. Negative x to the negative 2. Now, in the numerator, when we differentiate that, and of course, we're applying L'Hopital's rule. We're not applying the quotient rule for dif differentiating the numerator. Uh, again, it might be helpful to think of this as not 2 over x, but maybe 2 times x to the negative first. All right. So let's differentiate that. I'm going to get 1 over 1 plus 2x to the negative first times the derivative of the denominator. So differentiate this part of it. So let me put that in you know, parentheses here. What's the derivative of this going to be? The derivative of 1 is 0. <laughs> We'll look past the 2 and just differentiate the x to the negative first. Negative 1 times 2 is going to be negative 2 x to the negative 2. Okay. Well, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Maybe, yes, no. It is because these terms are eventually going to cancel each other out. So I've got x to the negative 2 and x to the negative 2. Both of these terms cancel each other out. The negatives are also going to cancel each other out. So let's get rid of the negatives as well. And what am I going to be left with? I'm going to be left with the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over 1 plus 2 times x to the negative first. I'm going to go back to writing it like this. Everything here in the denominator is canceled out, so that's just a 1 there. Uh, ln of y. Okay. Looking good there. Can I calculate my limit now? Well, as x approaches infinity, what happens to the numerator? Where does it go? Two. Just 2. And then a denominator, I'll have a 1 plus 0. So overall, the limit is 2. I'm not quite done. Remember, I've got the ln of y is equal to 2. How do you solve for y here? Yeah. Raise it to the power of e. e to the ln y equals e to the second, or y equals e squared. Yay. So this is an exact answer. This is the kind of thing that I would typically ask for on an exam. You know, when you look at it on a graphing calculator or say on decimals, you know, you'll see something that's suggestive of that, but not necessarily actually be able to get the right answer out of that. If we look at this, let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah, we can see that it's slowing down. It's approaching some limit. But unless you know exactly what you're looking for, it's kind of hard to see exactly what limit that would be. In this case, it's 
y equals e squared. That's your limit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Thoughts or comments on example H? Let's do two more. Uh, maybe one more. So we've got the limit as x approaches infinity of x times sine of pi, sine of 7 pi over x. All right. Well, this is another indeterminate form. If we look at this carefully, the first part is going to be infinity. The second part, you're getting the sine of some number divided by a number that's getting increasingly large. So really, as x approaches infinity, 7 pi over x is going to approach 0. And the sine of 0 is 0. So it is an indeterminate form, but it's not in the indeterminate form that allows you to use L'Hopital's rule. OK. Now, there's no exponent here, so I'm not going to be bothering to take logs. But it's not in the form of something over something like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So again, I've got to play another little trick here. Limit as x approaches infinity. I'm going to have to rewrite this. And you've kind of seen something like this in the previous one. Any suggestions as to how I could rewrite this expression? Yeah. Sine of 7 pi over x divided by 1 over x. So, OK. And maybe we'll rewrite that limit as x approaches infinity of the sine of 7 pi x negative first over x negative first. Same thing. It still is giving me something like 0 over 0. So I can apply L'Hopital's rule. In fact, you can apply L'Hopital's rule. This one's a little bit more user friendly than the last one. See what you can come up with. If you're watching this later, pause the video, try and figure this out for yourself. So, differentiating the x, the 7 pi is a constant, that's the function. The negative multiplies the 7 pi, and then you subtract one from the x, so it should be 7 pi x to the negative second, or negative 7 pi. So this would be a 
seventh line. So maybe that's, just, that's going to be part of the group at the inside. Is the seventh line. So I'm scared of that. Definitely look at that. They need to assume there's a negative here. Um, yeah. But you need seventh line stuff. There we go. Good. Uh, and I'll keep it seventh line. Um, I would just cancel the next Inside stays the same. Okay. Times are in the inside. Yeah. And then when you differentiate the inside, yeah, um, yeah you have to set up pi times the that term, which is going to be like this. Okay. That's for the, oh, that's for the, So the big challenge in a lot of this stuff is getting your derivatives right. When we differentiate the numerator, it's going to be the derivative of the outside function, which is derivative of the sine. Derivative of sine is what? Cosine. So it's going to be cosine of 7 pi x negative first times the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of the inside, this is just a constant. So it's going to be a 7 pi... And then when I differentiate x to the negative first, what happens? So the, the negative is going to come out here, and then x to what power? Negative second. Same thing down here. We're going to end up with negative x to the negative second. And like I said, this is a little bit more user-friendly. That term disappears. The minus disappears. All that you're left with is the limit as x approaches infinity of the cosine of 7 pi x to the negative first times 7 pi. I put over 1, but it's not going to make a difference. What I will do is I will move this back down to the denominator to help me look at this limit. Limit as x approaches infinity of... 7 pi times a cosine of 7 pi over x. So the constant, as far as the limit is concerned, can be factored out. That's not going to affect the limit at all. Limit as x approaches infinity of the cosine of 7 pi over x. As x approaches infinity, what's going to happen to this quotient? It's going to be 0, right? I mean, 7 pi divided by something that's getting increasingly large is going to be 0. And what's the cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is 1. So 7 pi. Yay. All right. I think we're going to stop it here. I think we've got a lot of good practice. Certainly there was one more that I wouldn't mind wouldn't have minded to do, but uh, we'll call it a day with L'Hopital's rule on that one. Comments or thoughts on this last example here? All right.